What's up everyone, I'm Burt Wagner and today we're going to talk about rolling back data in temporal tables. So have you ever accidentally overwrote some data in a table? Personally, it's happened to me plenty of times. Maybe I think I'm in a development server, but I'm actually in production and I, I hit that key and bam, my data's gone. If you're using a temporal table, you might be thinking, well, it's not that big of a deal because my previous row of data was saved to the historical table. And you're right, it is, right? So if you overwrite some data with an update statement, it's still there in the historical table. However, there's no built-in way to actually roll back that data. You could always grab that data out of the historical table and insert it again into your temporal table, but you'll still have those old records of you accidentally overwriting the data. That might be okay some of the time, but if you actually really want to roll back the data, you know, clean up all those historical records, it takes a little bit of work, and that's what we're going to look at today. So let's take a look at the demo. Let's take a look at some of this data from a car rental business that I uh, created as an example for last week's episode. We basically have our temporal table on top here, we call it car inventory, and this represents like the current state of our table, right? So um, in my business, in this example, I have two Chevy Malibus, one of them is black, one of them is silver, and they're currently both in the parking lot with their mileage and when they were returned there. We also have our historical table down below, which kind of kept keeps track of what happened to the data in our above temporal table you know, over time. And so you'll, you'll kind of see originally when these cars were added, they had zero mileage. And then as they were rented out to people, they would leave the lot. So in lot becomes zero. And then when they're returned, they have some additional mileage added. But let's say I made a mistake when I, uh, with this most recent record of mine, let's say these two records here were added accidentally. Maybe I had a bug in uh, the application that interacts with this database and they were just inserted there on error. So how do we roll back our temporal table data? We want to not only roll back the records in the temporal table, right, to have a more current view, but also we need to clean up our history table. So when we roll back this data, not only do we want to roll back the current uh, data in our temporal table, because that's wrong, but we also want to roll back, uh, or I guess clean up the history table to get rid of any extra errors. So if we want to roll back to May 18th, Basically, what we're going to want to do is in this top temporal table, these two records are going to get deleted, and they're going to get replaced with whatever the data looked like on the 18th. And so for the black Chevy Malibu, that would be this record here, because the 18th falls in between the system start time and system end time. And for the silver Chevy Malibu, it would be this record here, because once again, May 18th falls in between these two system start and end times. Now, like I said, there's no built-in way to do this with temporal tables. We have to do it manually. So let's see what we have to do. If we just scroll down, what I'd like to do is create a temporary table called rollback, which we're going to populate with the, the newest current data right, that we want to roll back to. So we're going to use the for system time uh, property here to get that data and see what it looks like. And so... I'm just going to run that insert here and the update, which you'll see in a second. And let's just take a look at what that data looks like, right? So we have those two records I highlighted before. These are what are now going to be our most current records in our temporal table. I ran this update statement here because our temporal table, the system end time, whichever column you have designated um, as your end time column always needs to be this max value of date time two. So we just kind of, already did that as part of our staged uh, temporary table called rollback. Now, to actually update and clean up our data in our temporal and historical table, we need to first turn off system versioning, so turn off the temporal aspect of this table, and we need to enable identity inserts so that we can overwrite uh, the primary key values that are there. So we'll do that, and what we'll do is we will delete the data from our temporal table here, our car inventory table, where the car IDs exist in our temporary rollback table. That's just, you know, in this example, we could have just deleted everything in our temporal table, but if you're working on a system that has more rows um, than just a contrived demo, you'll want to just delete the rows you actually need. And for the easy part here, right, we'll just then insert all our rows from our temporary rollback table into our car inventory table. And if we take a look, there we go. So our records from 
the rollback temporary table are now in our uh, car inventory table, which will be our temporal table. Now let's clean up all of that, those historical records. In order to do that, we need to delete the records from our car inventory history, which is our historical table, based on uh, whatever records were in our rollback table. Um, essentially, we want to delete anything that happened in the history table after what are now our most current records. So if we do that, we'll go ahead and take a look. You'll see our history table. Our top temporal table, inventory table, didn't change at all, but our history table now has a lot less records because we deleted everything after um, the dates that were in our rollback temporary table. So we cleaned up that history and we're almost good to go. The only thing you'll notice um, is these system end times for the last rows, the, uh, the most recent system end times, both here, uh, May 16th for the black Malibu and May 14th for the silver Malibu, they don't match the times that are in our temporal table at the top right here. We have May 25th. That's a data integrity error uh, in SQL Server. Temporal tables just need to follow that rule where the system start time of our temporal tables uh, matches the last entry um, for those keys in our historical table. So we need to fix this by updating our um, historical table to reflect the temporal tables dates. So in order to update our historical table with the correct dates, we can join on our rollback table one more time here. And these queries are in the blog post. Oh, let's just go there, right? So nice long update query there if we run that. And then we go take a look at our tables again. We'll see now our last two rows of our uh, Chevy Malibu for the black and silver Malibus match our timestamps that are also in our car inventory temporal table. So we got we got rid of that data integrity issue. Everything is good to go now. Um, so with that said, all we have to do is turn our temporal table back on, turn system versioning back on, and we're specifying what we're using as our history table there. And we're also just going to turn on, or rather turn off identity inserts. And that's it. We're back to having a temporal table that will work just the way you would expect it. If you insert a new record, it'll keep track of it, um, both the current and the historical table, as well as any other modifications. And overall, it's a pretty easy procedure to do that. You just want to be really careful because you are deleting data, right? Make it back up if you need to. Um, it's too bad that there's no built-in way to roll back this data, but it's still, a, you're able to accomplish it if you need to. Good luck. I hope you have never roll back any data because of course you're not going to make any mistakes but um, maybe if someone else makes some mistakes to your data you can now know how to fix it and roll back pretty easily thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like comment and subscribe below and i'll see you next week